family moved to Hawaii in 1980. Uh -huh. um, but my ex-husband, he worked for Gulf Canada, and then he got involved in geothermal development. And uh, oh, wrong one, not the leaf, not the leaf. Oh, sticking to my, I want the foil. And uh, so we ended up moving to Hawaii in 1991. You're not going to put that on YouTube. Hawaii from 1991 to 1996, and then Jakarta, Indonesia from 1996 to 1998. Back to Hawaii um, from 98 until 2001. And at that time, my um, ex-husband, well, he was my husband at the time, we went our separate ways. So I moved to Sydney with our two teenage boys and three cats and a dog and a torch and a kiln and started my own business. I thought, well, let's give it a go. And, um, and it's been great. I, I got connected with a great art community there and the Saanich Peninsula Art Council has two really successful studio tours every year so I got affiliated with those and that kind of put me on the map and then I did, like you've done with your business, I did the hard work of doing every show there was and I got established and um, I got, I was a guest artist at the Filbert Festival on Vancouver Island, I don't know if you know of that one, that was in 2004 and that was another really good milestone for me. <laughs> So here I am. And so now this is... Let me just pull up my foil here so I can make... I'm trying to find the package here. So this is fine silver. And it's just been hammered very thin, put through a mill to yes. make it really, really... A pokey thing? <laughs> a roll. Oh, okay. I don't know. That sounds better. Than a a pokey. stick? <laughs> a, silver a silver foil stick. pokey stick. <laughs> Of course, that's what it is. That would be the technical terminology. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All about technical words. Okay, and that's going to go in the bead that I'm going to make in a second. And I don't know if you feel me making a stringer. This is something, one of the first things you learn to do when you're doing glass is to make a stringer. Because of these thinner rods, use them every day and lots of them for flowers, dots, scrolling, small detail on your beads. Once I heat enough of the glass on the end, I'll pull it into the thin rod. Oh, okay. How many beads can you get out of it? Is this called a stringer or you're well, making this is a stringer? A, this is a glass rod. A okay. stringer? Glass rod. Oh, it just depends on the size of oh, the bead. Okay. Now, you were saying that it's all Italian glass. Is Mostly. that because it's a higher quality or just, just well, is? They've been making it for hundreds of years, yeah. and I got started. The lady that taught me used Italian glass. There's, there's different, there's German glass, and um, I mean, it, it's nice to use Italian because it's such a romantic notion, isn't yeah. it? It's from the island of Murano. I was just there too in January. Oh, yes, nice. Very fun. And I thought I would be really inspired by the glass, but it turned out I was so inspired by the architecture of, I mean, there, we were in a building that was built in 695. Oh, I know. And we were there was a small symphony playing. That oh, that nice. was amazing, just amazing. Nice. Are you Italian? No, I'm not. I'm a whole mix of Northern European, Swedish, Norwegian, German, and Scottish. So I don't know what that is. Okay, so let's get that. Now I can start. So I'll get my mandrel. This is a stainless steel rod, and I've got a clay solution on the end. It's called bead release. I'm going to build the bead on there. And once it's been made, fired in a kiln and cooled back to room temperature, I'll soak it in water. The clay will let go, and then the bead can slide off. So the bead will slide off, and then the hole that remains is how you string the bead. have to heat the mandrel too so that the glass will stick to it. Oops. That's why I'm facing the back wall. Yes. Yesterday a little piece landed on someone's foot before I changed. Oh, so we don't want to burn people. I burn myself, but we don't want to burn them. Oops. Alright, so I'll straighten that up a bit better later, but I'm going to add some other glass. So now, was that a, a, that's not the Italian glass, this is yes. the base glass? This is Italian, yeah, it's a dark ivory. Okay. So all the glass I'm going to use right now okay. is Italian. So just different colors of it. Yeah. Now, but, and they're all this, the same, um, I know you're saying Italian, but is, are there different types of Italian glass that you're using, or they're all one kind, just 
there's two companies there. Okay. Um, but I and I use both the different companies. And and the American made glass that I use, there's different types of American made. Some isn't compatible with the Italian, but the one I do okay. use of course is. Okay, so that's the dark purple. I'm gonna go back to my clear glass and encase that purple. <laughs> yeah, someone asked me yesterday, do you plan ahead? Like, most of the time, because if you don't plan ahead, you'll get in the middle of it and go, what, oh, what should I do now? Although yeah. I do do some of those beads. <laughs> yeah. Experimental fun ones. Yeah. And I'll melt that in. And then I'm going to take a rod that I already made earlier. This has got fine silver melted into dark ivory. The two. At home I have armrests, but I didn't bring them. Otherwise, my, I think my arms might fall off the other day. Oh, I did. And then, those little pieces of... I'm looking for another pair of squeezers. Silver pokey things we, I made earlier. Fine silver. Will break up into little balls. Make an interesting pattern. Yeah, I guess it. not the rod I would normally use. I didn't want to plan. This is why you plan ahead, right? Right. Twist that up right up a little bit. Oops, I'm trying to twist it. I'll show you a, a finished bead with this design when I'm done. I'm just blowing on the glass to cool it like a little dot in there. scrolling pattern. want to melt it in enough so that I know that it won't break off but I want to keep that on the surface and I'll take you over to my table and show you. Is that good what I'm doing? Oh, that's it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now what inspired you to follow we're, this? We're just talking about that. Oh I loved making jewelry. That was a sort of a friend of mine. Her sister had bought some jewelry making materials in 1990 and she um, hated it and so she mailed the materials to Debbie I was living in northern Alberta at the time and Debbie called me one day and said you need to come down here and um, see this stuff and I just I was blown away it wasn't glass it was just this really strange unusual little material yeah. and a month later I did my first show Wow and one month later, one month later it. it just took oh, off yeah. and then I switched to polymer clay a few years later and then I did polymer clay for gosh um, eight years. Do and you, you use that no, at all anymore? No. Yeah. And then I got interested in the glass and that's where the rest of that story yeah. took off. As I thought I could maybe teach myself. And, and I was trying to figure out how I got interested in the glass, but I, I had seen some glass beads and it just, the possibilities were unending. And there's something about glass that human beings are fascinated with. And yeah. I'm oh, sure someone exactly. else knows the answer, but I don't know what it is. It's the transparency, it's the, the feel of them, the, um, the history of yes, them maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've been around for a long time. 